Hi students, today let's see about the lesson, the first lesson in the biology of grade 11. Uh, the unit 1, diversity of the living world. The first lesson is the living world. I'm Kesantil Kumar. The term biology is derived from the Greek word bios. It means that life and logia means the study of. So biology is the study of living and living or life and living organisms. A life can be defined as the property or quality of the living organisms that distinguishes from dead or non-living some functions like uh, growth, or reproduction, metabolism and uh, response to stimuli. So these are all some of the characteristic features we can see. So we can see the characteristic features of living things. So the first one is the growth and second is the reproduction and uh, next is the metabolism and response to stimuli. Let's see first the growth. Growth is an important characteristic feature of living beings. They increase in mass and number of cells. Non-living objects also grow in a mass by accumulation of material on its surface. Growth in a living being takes place due to internal processes that is cell division. Plants show continuous growth throughout their lifespan, while animals show growth up to a certain period of time or certain age. An access to reproduction. All living beings produce their offspring by the process of reproduction. Reproduction is an important process of for continuing the lineage of a species. This reproduction can be classified into two types. We know very well the first one is the sexual and another one is a sexual reproduction. Fungi generally they are reproduced by asexual spores. And yeast and hydra, they are reproducing by budding. And the planaria, that are the flatworms, they are reproduced by regeneration. Unicellular organisms like bacteria, unicellular algae or amoeba, they are reproduced by fission. Reproduction is synonymous with the growth, that is, increasing number of the cells. So metabolism next. All living organisms are made of chemicals belonging to various classes, sizes and functions. The chemicals within a living organisms are constantly being made and changed into some other biomolecules. The sum total of all the chemical reactions occurring in our body is metabolism. So no non-living object exhibits metabolism. The metabolisms can be classified into two groups. One is anabolism and another one is the catabolism. So anabolism is the merging process. So you can say the simple molecules joined together and forming a complex molecule. And a catabolism is the process in which it is the breakdown reaction. Complex molecule is broken down into simple pieces. The response to external stimuli, living organisms respond to their surroundings or environment and respond to environmental stimuli it could be physical, chemical or biological. Plants respond to external factors like light, water, temperature, other organisms, pollutants, etc. Organisms can sense and also respond to the environmental cues. Photoperiod affects the reproduction in seasonal breeders, both the plants and animals. Organisms handle chemicals entering their bodies and aware of their surroundings. Human being the only organism which has a self-consciousness. 
diversity in the world so first let's say about the biodiversity biodiversity is the term in which the organism present in the earth is called biodiversity the diversity fication the diversification of a uh, different creatures different organisms in the world we can call the biodiversity nomenclature it's a system of uh, naming organisms so the naming system of an organism is called as nomenclature and there are millions of uh, plants and animals in the world so plants and animals are known in the local area but they are local names so these local names are vary from place to place or region to region and within a country also sometimes a country to country so it's impossible for any person to remember the names of an organism in all the languages hence there's a need for a uniform system of a nomenclature of organisms so each and every organisms in the world they have the independent name according to their area location according to their country the name of an organism may vary from one place to another place one state to another state one country to another country to avoid all this confusion a person cannot remember all the languages names of a particular animal or the plant so that to avoid the confusion of this problem the universally accepted naming system was introduced that is called as the nomenclature so identification next to can see identification is the process of assigning a pre-existing taxon name to an individual organisms icbn i international code for botanical nomenclature iz is a dn international code for zoological nomenclature so binomial nomenclature by means two nomenclature we know very well the naming system two naming system for the name contains two parts so that is a binomial naming system or binomial nomenclature for all the living organisms in the world such as plants and animals so here this is the man a carolus linnaeus the scientist and who first discovered this binomial nomenclature system binomial nomenclature is a system of naming a species by giving a each a name composed of a two components a generic name and species name so genus name and a species name there are two parts in the binomial system so carlos linnaeus a sweden scientist invented the modern system of binomial nomenclature so this is the man carlos linnaeus from sweden he was the one first invented the modern system of a binomial nomenclature there are some rules for the nomenclature the naming system has been declared and has been established by using some of the rules and regulations and let's see the rules of this nomenclature biological names are usually written in latin word and it italics form these are the rules and a scientific name usually contains a two parts the first word is the genus and the second word is the species or specific epithet and the genus name starts with the capital letter and all the species name starts with the simple letter biological name is or printed in italics to indicate their a latin origin and underline when it is in handwritten when the biological name is written by the hand it should be underlined and when it is printed it should be a italics later and it is indicating it is from the latin word that's why we are typing it as a italic later example mangifera mangifera indica it's a biological name for the mango homo sapiens human rhizo sativa rice and triticum estivum is the wheat so rules for nomenclature the binomial naming system has a two parts the first part is the genus second part is the Uh, species so the genus starts with the capital letter and a species starts with a simple letter 
and the letter should be written in uh, written if it is a handwritten it should be underlined and when it is written typed it should be italics to indicate it is derived from the latin name and some of the examples are given here magnifera indica homo sapiens orisa sativa triticum estimum so these are all the scientific names for these organisms there are two parts who can see clearly so we can see is in the form of table classification next is the classification it is the process of grouping organisms into categories based on easily observable characters according to some observable characters the organisms can be classified into different groups according to some of the characteristic features visible characters next to taxon the scientific term for any unit used in the science of biological classification is called taxon taxonomy is the science of defining the groups of biological organisms on the basis of shared characteristics and a given name to those groups so carlos linnaeus is regarded as the father of the taxonomy he considered he was considered as he is being considered as the father of a taxonomy so classification taxon taxonomy but the process of classification the classification can be classified into different groups that is characterization identification classification and then the nomenclature generally the process of classification we can classify it into four different groups such as characterization then identification of an organism then classifying the organism then naming naming the organism or nomenclature so systematics the word systematic is it is derived from the latin word systema it means that systemic arrangement of organism systematic is means that systemic arrangement of organisms systematic is the uh, study of the diversification of living forms both both uh, past and present and the relationship among living things throughout the time linnaeus used to system on nature as the title of his publications taxonomic category classification involves hierarchy of four steps where each step represents a rank or category various steps of the classification hierarchy are called taxonomic categories each level in the hierarchy represents an increase in organizational complexity species so let's say about the classification now to species species is a group of individuals in which the individuals can interbreed among themselves members of a species have a large number of similar characters example the same thing the magnifera indica is a mango and a solanum tuberosum means a potato and the panthera leo it's for lion this is a species and next is the genus a group of closely related species is called genus group of closely related species is called as a genus example uh, potato tomato and brinjal are the three different species but are all belong to the genus solana so these are the different species maybe but they belong to the same genus that is called as solana so lion leopard lion you can see panthera leo is the scientific name leopard panthera thoris and a tiger panthera tigris 
again about uh, so among this uh, three names you can see the genus name is the panthera the same genus and species are different leo and parrots and tigris so these are the different species but the genus are the same so that we can say a group of closely related species is called a genus okay yeah uh, next we have to see about the family a group of closely related genera is called a family and families are characteristic on the basis of both vegetative and reproductive feature of a plants and species plant species example three different genera solanum uh, petunia and datura are placed into the family solanaceae in animals genus panthera and genus felis belong to the family felidae next one is the order a group of closely related families so a group of related genus called as the family a group of closely related families are called as order so order and other higher taxonomic categories are identified based on the aggregates of characters example plant families like uh, convolvul say lacea solanaceae are included in the order polymonia okay polymony ales and animals felidae and conidae belong to the order carnivora so the order is the same next is the class class is a major category made of one or more relation okay sorry one or more related orders that possess shared and similar correlated characters example class mammalia has a number of uh, orders like uh, carnivore rodentiary rodentia primata insectivora etc all possesses mammary glands external ears and hair so next is the phylum a group of closely related classes is called phylum phylum in the plant kingdom phylum has been replaced with division example pisces amphibia reptilia aves and mammalia to the phylum chordata last one is kingdom a group of all the related phyla is called kingdom example the kingdom plantae comprises all plants from various divisions all heterotrophic organisms which are eukaryotic and lack a cell wall or kept under animal kingdom so now we can see the classification order of classification the first level is the species the lowest or lower level and uh, from the species the next one is the genus next to genus we can see the family so next to family we can see the order so next to order we can see the gene class so next to class we can see the phylum and next to phy- phylum or another word division so the last one is we can say the kingdom so this is what we can say the order of classification first the largest group is uh, the kingdom and uh, likewise it comes on from the bottom the number of species so decreasing okay large variety in the kingdom so kingdom phylum class order family genus and species organisms with their taxonomic categories you can see here the table very clearly some of the names are given organisms common name man the biological name is homo sapiens in this homo is a genus and family is a hominidae order primitae class chordata 
phylum or division is called mammalia sapiens is the species name okay and house fly is the musca domestica <clears throat> and musca is the meaning uh, it's a genus name and domestica is the species name and its a family is musidae in order diptera and a class insecta phylum arthropoda mango magnifera indica magnifera is a genus name indica is a species name and anacardia ca anacardia ca okay this is a family name and a saprial order dicotyledonae is a class and angiospermae is a phylum and last one is the wheat is an example triticum estivum triticum is a genus and estivum is the species family poaceae and order poales class monocotyledonae and angiospermae that is the uh, phylum name <coughs> taxonomical studies next taxonomical studies storehouses of information and specimens which can help identification and a classification of organisms are called taxonomical aids study of various species of plants animals and other organisms are useful in agriculture forestry and industry etc these studies are useful to know about our bio resources and their diversity these help in identification naming and classification of organisms taxonomical aids herbarium the first one is the herbarium herbarium is the storehouse of a plant specimens herbarium is the storehouse of the plant specimens specimens are dried past and preservation and sheets these sheets are arranged systematically according to the universally accepted system of classification herbarium sheet contains information about date and place of the collection collector's name local and scientific name family etc and it provides a quick referral system in taxonomical studies taxonomical aids botanical gardens a botanical garden is a place where plants are grow and displayed for the purposes of research and education uh, each plant contains labels indicating their scientific name and family some famous botanical gardens The first one is the Indian Botanical Garden located at Calcutta National Botanical Research Institute and located in Lucknow Garden of Medical Plants and Bengal University West Bengal Taxonomical aids the next heading is the museum Museum is the place of collection of preserved plant and animal specimens for study and reference. Specimens are preserved in containers or jars in preservative solutions and can be preserved as dry as also. Insects are preserved in insect boxes. after collecting killing and pinning them large animals are stuffed and preserved so next one is the taxonomical aids zoological parks 
Zoological Park is the place where wild animals are protected and are similar to their structural habitat. Opportunities it provides opportunities to studying behavior and food habits of the animals. Some famous zoo in India, Zoological Park, Mysore, Nehru Zoological Park at Hyderabad, Trandrum Zoo, these are some of the important zoological park, and Zen Chennai Zoo. Taxonomic lights number 5 is the key. Keys are used for identification of plants and animals based on similarities and dissimilarities. So keys are analytical in nature, analytical in nature and based on contrasting characters in a pair called couplet. So out of two proposed out of two proposed characters, only one which is relevant is accepted while the other is rejected. Each statement in a key is called a lead. Separate taxonomic key are required for each taxonomic category such as family, genus, order, etc. So other taxonomical aids, flora, manuals and monographs and catalogs are other taxonomical aids. They help in correct identification. Manuals provide information for identification of names of various species in a given area. Monograph contain information on any particular taxon. Thank you. Uh, if you like this video, please give your uh, like and uh, give your comments, uh, your suggestions in the comment box, and it will be very helpful for us to create the next video, next lesson for you. So give your val valuable suggestions in the comment box. I'm expecting you.